Hello, welcome to Scripture Union Uganda's Values Education class for children in primary. My name is Lynn Ann. My name is Uncle Paul. And we are very excited to be your teachers. Yeah! We have six amazing lessons on a very important value. Please look out for our six videos on this value. You might be wondering what values is or even what value we will be studying. Well, get your Bible, uh -huh. notebook, right. and pen. And the pen. I'm sure, Uncle Paul, you have something for us. You're right, Aunt Lynn. Imagine if you came to my home very thirsty and you need a cold drink. And I had to choose from these four glasses to serve you. First, this glass is dirty outside, but clean inside. Should I serve you from this glass? Second glass, it's dirty inside, but it's clean outside. Would you prefer this one? The third glass, it's dirty inside and dirty outside. I think someone is saying, no, 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 I can't take it from that. The fourth glass, it's clean inside and clean outside. I can see you saying, hmm, serve me from that. And I know because it is clean outside and clean inside. So, this is your drink. Well, these glasses represent our lives. When you look into your heart, mind and body, how clean or pure are you before God? Could you be like this first person? Pure heart, clean inside? But maybe the way how you dress, the words that come out of you are not so pleasant. Or the second person, dirty, inside, very impure, but outside you really look nice. You use those nice perfumes, you speak very nice words, and you act so kindly, but in your heart, so dirty. Or your life is like this third glass, it's dirty outside and dirty inside full of vulgar words and all that you do is so sinful and so evil. Or the last glass where you poured our soda and so clean outside and inside. And I know not all of us are perfect, but with God's help, you can be clean in the way how you speak, in your actions and in your thoughts. This purity episode are here to make you and me better boys and girls by challenging us what we do with our minds, heart, and body. Well, children, Uncle Paul has already hinted on the value we are going to talk about. Can anyone guess? Yes, it's purity. Uh, but before we go into purity, our class is called the Values Education Class. What does the word values mean? It's very important for us to find out what that word means. So, a question I'm going to ask you. How would you define values? Hmm? The dictionary defines it as the moral principles and beliefs or acceptable standard of a person or social group. Now that looks like a very difficult definition. So for our class, we're going to use a very simple one and this is how we will define the word values. Values are a standard of right and wrong, good and bad, okay? Do you see the ruler in the picture? What do we use a ruler for? Yes, among other things, a ruler is used to measure length. In the same way, values help us to measure if what we are thinking, if what we are saying, if what we are doing, 
is right or wrong, good or bad. Let us say our definition again, but this time we are going to add action so we do not forget. So I'll use values are a standard of right and wrong, good and bad. Can you try that at home? Now, did you know that all of us have a set of values that we follow in life? The problem is that not everyone agrees on what is right or wrong. For example, some people think and even others say that it is okay to cheat as long as you do not get caught. But then others will say that no, cheating is always wrong. So who is correct? Who is correct? God is always correct because he is perfect and without sin. He tells us the right set of values to follow in the Bible, which is his word. If we follow his word, we will live happy and fulfilled lives. So in our lessons, we will use the Bible. Do you have your Bible with you? Well, if you don't have one, please make sure you have one in our next episode. Deal? Now, also for our lessons, we will be having a values promise. What is a values promise? This is a commitment we make that we will begin to practice what we have learned in our class. We won't leave what we have learned inside this class, no. We will start practicing it immediately. So our first values promise talks about the value that we will be studying. Do you remember the two classes that Uncle Paul showed us? One was clean, and one was dirty. So our values promise is talking about especially this clean and pure glass. I'm sure all of you would prefer to use this glass to drink water because it is clean and it is pure. So our values promise says, I will choose to keep myself pure. Our values promise has the word pure in it. Let's look at this word. Let's take a closer look at the word pure. What does pure mean? Or what does purity mean? You've heard this word so many times. What does it mean? In our class, we will define it like this. Purity is keeping my mind, heart, and body from anything sinful before God. Let's say that again. Purity is keeping my mind, heart, and body from anything sinful before God. Now, from our definition, Purity involves three areas of our lives. These are the mind, the heart, and the body. We are to keep our mind, heart, and body free from anything sinful before God. Sinful means anything that disobeys the standard of right and wrong that God has given us. Maybe you are thinking to yourself, how can I keep my mind from sin? I can't control my thoughts. You can keep your mind pure by avoiding feeding your mind with wrong information or images. For example, avoid listening, reading, watching, talking, or laughing about things that cause you to think wrong and sinful thoughts. How about your heart? How can you keep your heart free from sin? How can you keep your heart free from sin? By avoiding girl-boy relationships that tempt you to do wrong things and sin. And then your body. How can you keep your body from sin? By refusing to use your body in a wrong way. So we will focus particularly on keeping our mind, heart, and body from sexual sin. Remember I told you we will always use the Bible in our class? Let us see what God has to say about this in the Bible. Open your Bible to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 3. And then we will read it together. 
Are you ready? Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 says, God wants you to be holy and completely free from sexual immorality. I'll read that again. God wants you to be holy and completely free from sexual immorality. Now, the scripture that we just read is right there on your screen. Do you see two things that God is commanding us to do in this verse? I can see some of you already guessing. That's right. Number one, God wants us to be holy. And number two, completely free from sexual immorality. Now, to be holy is to be pure and sinless. And then, what is sexual immorality? This is involving yourself in sexual activities with anyone who is not your wife or husband. This includes sexual activities between two girls or two boys. Will you obey God's command? Of course, when you obey this command, you will also be following our values promise which says, I will choose to keep myself pure. Now this verse is very important and so we even have a song for it. I have my awesome friends who are going to help me sing our purity verse. Are you ready? Please enjoy and join them as they sing this song and we will be right back. Welcome back. Wasn't that fun? Well, I have a short story that teaches us the reason why it's important to keep your mind, heart, and body pure. The title of this story is The Precious Gift. Mr. Kasule was a good father to his children, James and Jen. One time, before he left for a business trip, he told his children that their aunt Mary, who lived in another country, was coming for a visit. He wasn't sure when she would arrive, but he gave James and Jane a gift, which he asked them to give Auntie Mary when she arrived. He asked James and Jane to be patient and wait for her. He gave them specific instruction not to open it or even give any part of this gift to anyone beside Auntie Mary. A couple of days went by and Auntie Mary had not yet arrived. The gift was nicely wrapped and James and Jen wondered what was inside. After a while, out of curiosity, James and Jen opened the gift and they said, that will surely do no harm. Inside, they found a bottle of very nice soda and cake. They got tempted to drink and eat some of it and justify their actions, saying, We have just taken a little. After all, she is our aunt. Then they shared a little more with friends who came to visit. The bottle was now almost empty and cake was less than half. Not long after that, Auntie Mary arrived. See, they gave her the gift, but it was not so nicely wrapped. And neither was it whole. How do you think James and Jen felt when they gave this gift to Auntie Mary? How do you think they felt? I'm sure they were ashamed. Then how do you think Auntie Mary felt when she got this gift that was opened and even some of what was inside was taken. How do you think Auntie Mary felt? I think she felt so hurt. She felt so hurt that they had misused her gift. Then how do you think their father reacted when he learned what they did? Do you think he accepted any of the excuses that they made? 
their father must have been very very disappointed with these children and i'm sure he punished them now children there's a lot that we can learn from this story just like the gift their father gave them god gave each of us a, a gift which is our sexuality our being a boy or a girl god created us male and female with sexual feelings he gave us specific commands to guard that special gift which is our sexuality throughout our lives god commands us to share that gift only after one gets married and to share it only with the person he or she is married to if we choose to disobey there are unfortunate and painful consequences now do you have a notebook with you remember we told you to have a notebook it's time for you to use that notebook i'm going to ask you a few questions and i just want you to think about them you're going to mark yourself on a scale of one two three with three being the best. For example, if you are very pure in, a, in an area that I mentioned, give yourself three points. And then two points if you are a little impure. And then one point if you are very, very, very impure. Keep your answers to yourself, okay? Now listen to question number one. How pure are you keeping your mind? How pure are you keeping your mind? Are you looking at pictures of nude people, watching videos, movies, or even talking about things which are tempting you to think impure thoughts? Do you laugh and talk about things which God says are sin? How pure are you keeping your mind? If you're saying, my mind is very pure, give yourself three. If you're saying, ah, there's a little thing I'm not doing right, give yourself two. But if you're saying, man, me, my mind is completely not pure, I'm not keeping it pure, give yourself a, a one. And then question number two, how pure are you keeping your heart? Are you involved in any relationship that is causing you to disobey God and sin? How pure are you keeping your heart? Check yourself. Then question number three. How pure are you keeping your body? Are you protecting the important gift of sex that God gave you so that you can give it to the one you marry or you're giving it away to, to anyone? Have you thought about those answers? Have you put your scores? Now add your score up. If you score at nine, we at SU are very proud of you and we encourage you to keep doing what is right. By doing that, you are keeping your life like this glass, very clean and pure. If you score at eight and below, I encourage you to start doing what is right today before you ruin your life. Ask for God's forgiveness and help to obey his word and our values promise. By the way, let's repeat our values promise again. I will choose to keep myself pure. I hope you're going to do that. Now, the fun part is coming back again. I'm going to ask my awesome friends to come on and do for us another song. And this song reminds us about God's standard of purity. The song is called, I Will Stand for Purity. Get up from your seat and let's join them and dance and sing together. And then when we come back, we will end our lesson. Welcome back. We have learned a lot today, but I want you to remember that God created sex and the right time to have it is in marriage. Do not listen to anyone who tells you otherwise. 
it is very possible for everyone to control their sexual desires and say no to sex with the help of God. He is able to give us the power to do so. So we're going to say a prayer. You're going to repeat this prayer after me. Okay, humble yourself. Okay, let's say, Dear God, thank you for creating me. Thank you for the gift of sexuality. I pray that you help me to keep my mind, my heart, and my body free from sexual sin. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone says, Amen. See you next time. Do not miss our lesson. Bye.